Hey Sherry, I just want to thank you for tonight's wonderful show and for your continued efforts in preaching Yah's truth to the nations. I've been a huge fan for about a year now. I don't post much in the group, but I'd like to pass this on to all of Yah's people. It's something I read at the Karyite Corner on how to make a certain flour or grain. Uh, that's okay to eat for Passover. I just thought maybe the listeners tonight might like to hear it in case there was any confusion. And it's just a test to identify what types of grain can become leaven. Is to take the flour of that grain, mix it with water, and leave it for a few hours. If the dough rises, that grain is subject to becoming hametz, which is leaven. On the other hand, if the dough spoils, then that grain or plant is not leavenable, and it can be freely used and cooked on Passover. So there you go. Just put it with water, and if it rises, it's no good. If it doesn't, then it's fine. Uh, Passover is April 3rd. Coming up real quick here, folks, this week. Uh... April 3rd, in the next week, too. Uh, back to Yahweh.com, where I have more information on this year's Passover. Sherry, two questions. Have you ever been asked to be a guest on Coast to Coast AM? No, I haven't. And would you do it if asked, just to get the truth out, considering they have a huge audience? Yes, I would. They've never asked. They don't have the guts to ask. <laughs> they don't have the guts to They don't have the cojones for the real truth. They don't want to hear it. They can't handle people like me. Uh, second, the Ten Commandments were on TV Saturday night, and do you think the miracles performed were in any way performed by the fallen angels, or were they involved in any way with the whole Moses story in Egypt? Well, the, the, Satan can perform his own miracles. The Lord's always said that. He, has, he can perform his own mimic miracles, just as Moses did, whose miracles were from the Lord. Because the Lord empowered Moses and, and, and the circumstances around that whole thing with getting the, the Israelites out of Egypt. Satan empowers his people uh, to perform satanic tricks, illusions. Uh, the Bible codes call it magic. Uh, Satan has power to perform magic. You see it through Benny Hinn all the time. Uh, with Benny Hinn and his false miracles and, and, and things like that. It's, it's just magic. It's false. And so... Uh, that's what we're going to see a lot coming. That's why so many people are going to fall head over heels for this Sananda, this Jesus that's coming. Hello, Sherry. Got some quick questions. Are Cain and Abel twins? Uh, where is the Ark of the Covenant? Uh, I don't really know if I can answer that about Cain and Abel. Um, I don't think I can answer that one. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? Uh, I think that is still hidden. Uh, when the Lord comes back uh, at the second coming and his foot touches the Mount of Olives and there's a great earthquake, I think it'll be found then. Uh, I don't think that. I know that the one they have now is a mimic. Uh, I see it all the time in the Bible codes. It's a fake, it's a duplicate. Half expect them to pull it out of Ethiopia and do a romp across the desert when my Trey and Jesus get here. <laughs> I see this one all the time. About Ethiopia and this fake Ark of the Covenant in the Bible codes. Uh, and so, uh, probably why. I always wondered why the Rastafarians always had so much interest in the Bible codes, because there's so many of them that call themselves, uh, decoders that are actually Rastafarians. And, and so, what kind of discernment could they possibly have? Because they're not, they don't have the Holy Spirit within them. I think they, they use that. Uh, the Bible codes to try to suppress information that's coming out that hurts them because, uh, you know, they're all, let's go to Ethiopia, let's have an exodus to Ethiopia. <laughs> the Lord's people are being called to gather in Ethiopia and all this Rastafarian crap. Uh, and it's all just Satan's game plan uh, to pull out this fake Ark of the Covenant out of Africa. So don't fall for any of that, folks. Uh, I do know this, that even if Sananda were to bring one in the sky with him <laughs> in his Hollywood production Blue Beam Project if when he returns when he comes to earth as God it will not be the real one the real one will never be revealed until the most high until until time is over and we see Yahushua this is the real second coming of Christ at Armageddon uh, will never be revealed until then and so, it's, and so anyone that you see up now until whenever is fake Dear Sherry, may Yahushua bless you, your loved ones, and your work. Tonight also I talked to a sister in the Lord that I've known for 18 years and told her what's coming. Why our pastor have been lured. I stumbled also on Scott McQuaid's website that you know about and wrote an article about. 
I wonder for what when I read there, my knowledge is I'm a born again Christian. If I'm saved at all, I'm writing to you from Saguenay, Quebec. I know you're right on with all you're telling us from our research and all the World Wide Web. You shall bless you. Uh, yes, of course you keep in contact with me. Um, I have a lot of listeners, a lot of support from Quebec in Canada. And certainly want to thank all my supporters uh, to support this ministry weekly or monthly or just occasionally. Uh, I just love love you all very much. I know who you are. Uh, don't forget names. Uh, don't forget countries and cities and things like that. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I love you all very much. Uh, question from a, a listener. My family and I were talking last week about when exactly Passover was. They say Passover is 22nd. Apparently, if it was not found by March 8th, that would be that day. Uh, that find it by the 8th day. I don't go, I don't go by the Talmudist online. I don't go by the Taurus online. I go by the Comran calendar. And according to the Comran calendar, we already missed Passover. <laughs> it was back in January. Um, <laughs> I just wasn't paying attention, uh, because it's a different, calendar, different things, I don't know, you have to go back to Yahweh.com and read up on the Cumberland calendar thing, uh, but also there's also another festival date uh, for April 3rd, and so that's the one I'm celebrating, and I'm celebrating Passover on April 3rd because of the Cumberland calendar, and uh, Simon's configurations with this calendar to today's dates as much as he can, uh, because I know that Simon has a, has a pure heart for the Lord, has done a lot of work in digging back to the original calendars as to, to comparing then to now. And and that's what I choose to go by. Uh, that's what I choose to go by. It feels right to me. Uh, and so that's all I need. That's all I need, you know, just to feel right by it. Question from a listener. Uh, I pay special attention to the sun often in the evening before it sets on many nights. As the sun is near, it's time to set. I always notice streaks of chems, trails across it, and weird blue purplish clouds around it or right near it. Are they trying to cover something up that we could see at that time? Or are the sun's rays more damaging to the earth? Or do you not have a clue? <laughs> always, always consider the latter. I don't have a clue. Uh, because in this one, I don't. Uh, I know that they're chemtrailing the sun to keep the harmful rays, the bright rays. I shouldn't say harmful. The <laughs> The bright rays off of the earth because the aliens don't like it. <laughs> Our sun is, is uh, uh, too powerful for them. Uh, it's really sickening. But like I said, they have a, an agenda, 101 different reasons why they're doing the chemtrails. I don't know why they'd be chemtrailing the sun just just to, to keep the sunlight off of the earth. Um, because they, they, you know, they've got a million different plan reasons. They're trying to force famine here. They want fails the crop. Uh, crops to fail. They, they're trying to work on weather uh, manipulation and weather weapons. They want certain weather here and weather there. And I can't even keep up with them anymore. Uh, so they're always chemtrailing. Uh, but a way to fight the chemtrails is with the orgone that we have. Because it will keep chemtrails out of your area. Question from a listener. Is the word of God the Torah or the complete Old Testament? Uh, it's the Torah, the first five, the Torah is the first five books of Moses. People usually say it's the whole KG, but that can't be true. Uh, the Word of God, folks, uh, what is it in John 1 1? Uh, because he, he, he became flesh. The Word became flesh. Uh, and so I don't relegate the, the Son of God or the Most High God to what the KJV says he is. He became flesh. You know, I don't follow the standard of books because so many were written by Paul. And the Lord's already explained to me who Paul is and, and why the, the Bible's dominated with his books. Uh, I do read the New Testament. And, and I love the Old Testament. Um, what I do follow is teachings of Yahushua and his apostles. His apostles. <laughs> and that includes James, Peter, John. 
And look, there's no Luke mentioned, there's no Timothy mentioned, there's no Paul mentioned, there's no... His apostles were qualified.